on tonight's show, we're talking about Ray Rice getting cut from the Ravens and suspended indefinitely. We got a lot of NFL stories. I mean, week one just happened. <laughs> and we're talking some MLB magic numbers. You better stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. You think, though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen? Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> and so, tonight is Thursday night, and we are sacrificing watching Thursday night football for you, folks. For you. All for you. Who are we sacrificing playing? Just watching... Because I'll talk Ravens play. versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> Ooh, that's actually probably a pretty good game. Yeah, and they just kicked off the second half, and um, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll be able to watch the fourth quarter. But yeah, so tonight, unfortunately, we got a couple stories. One story in particular, I don't really want to talk about because I just hate it when we hear this thing. But we're gonna just jump right into it, just get it over there, rip the bandaid off because it's necessary. I mean, this is something we have to talk about. We are a sports show. We wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't talk about it, and. That is Ray Rice. Yes, Ray Rice. So, this past Monday, a new video of Ray Rice and the incident with his wife. Now, you might remember we did a video, only his our biggest video to date. His then-girlfriend, now wife. Then his then-girlfriend, now wife. Now wife. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They were, they were just engaged at that point. They are now married. Um, everybody saw the original video that came out back in February, where Ray Rice is dragging his unconscious then fiance out of a hotel... Um, Elevator. And it came out later that he had hit her. He had done something to knock her unconscious. Well, then we had Ray Rice go on probably the biggest spin tour to try to spin this in the best positive light for himself. Not only did he lie himself, he had his then-girlfriend, fiancé, now wife, lie for him, it seems like. And uh, he lied to the NFL. He lied to his own team. Um, and if he didn't lie to those people, there's something up. So what happened what was, was on the Monday. Lie that he said? What was the well, lie? I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. Uh, on Monday, on Monday, they released TMZ Sports. Which how did TMZ get this video before the NFL? I have no clue. No clue at all. But TMZ because Sports this is what they do. Well, yeah, like, but literally what they do is they they go they talk to people like, hey man, I'll give you some money, give me some extra footage from whatever you have. But that's, still, that's you would business. think that an NFL investigation, especially with all the power the NFL has as an organization in America, would have gotten this video a long time ago. But again, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. that as we go on. But um, so the video shows Ray Rice in the elevator with his then fiance. I'm just gonna say wife from now on, so you know he she was his fiance at that point, but now she's she he, she right, is we'll his on. wife. Okay, so so it shows them in the elevator. And what happens is it looks like they're getting into a little bit of an argument. They're talking back and forth, back and forth. Then you see Ray Rice. I don't know if he hits her, but he definitely puts his hand up to her face and pushes her. So a lot of people I know call that a smush. Pushes her away. He takes a step back. She gets obviously angry that he laid his hands on her in such a way and starts moving towards him. Now, there are different accounts. Uh, I've heard from some people that if you hear the audio of the video, she spits at him. Um, but I've also heard it the other way around where Ray spit on her, so I'm not quite sure how that goes. But all I know is, irrefutably, she takes one step forward towards him, obviously angry, but not raising her hands, so his earlier defense of she was hitting him doesn't apply, and he, boom, right, left, right cross, right to her face. She goes flying into the elevator wall, and then knocks her head against that and falls unconscious onto the floor. Then they kind of fast forward a little bit in the video and they show him dragging her unconscious body out of the um, the elevator. 
And so this led, after this video was released, this led to the Ravens cutting Ray Rice. They terminated his contract. And then the NFL suspended him indefinitely. Now, why and the it took... there hmm? being... And can we explain what the difference is there? So, because people might think that what's the difference between suspending him indefinitely and he's already cut? Well, one is done by the NFL and one is done by the uh, Ravens. Well, the, the yeah. suspension yeah. definitely means that he can't play for any team now. Yes, exactly. He cannot play for any team for a certain period of time, uh, undetermined period of time right now, and the Ravens were just cutting ties with him. Now, this is... It's horrendous. If you watch the video, it's horrible. I mean... Earlier, he had said that it was self-defense. If you watch our previous video, they had a press conference where he trots his wife out there. He goes out there, his defense lawyer goes out there and says that she hit him at first. Yes, he hit her back. He shouldn't have done that, but she was attacking him. She initiated the aggression almost. And now we find out that that's totally untrue because whatever she might have said to him, I don't care what she said to him. She was obviously saying something bad to him because she was upset with him. And, but he was saying something bad back to her. He was the one who initiated the physical contact. He put his hands to her face first, then took a step back and clocked her and knocked her unconscious. Now, the lies I was talking about was he, it is said that he actually sat down with Roger Goodell. He brought his wife in there, and she pleaded. She said, please, please don't do this. Uh, he's a good guy. This has never happened before. Please don't suspend him for too long. Give him a second chance. He sat down with the Ravens. Did the same thing. Said, hey guys, it was this is what happened. She was hitting me. I was drunk. I couldn't control myself. I hit her. None of that is good, but when you see this video, it just takes it to the next level of bad. It, it, it's just it's horrendous. So, it just um, shows that, that's, that it wasn't really that way. I mean, he clearly didn't even look... Like, even the drunk idea. He might have been, but he wasn't like stumbling around drunk. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he handles He had alcohol, enough but... composure to punch her square in the face. And, and he was and... rather calmly dragging her out of the elevator, too. Yeah. Like, I was kind of surprised. Well, he was just like, oh, got to drag her out. And not only that, after he drags her out of the elevator, because um, they were actually, TMZ, I believe, uh, interviewed a few of the security people. Um, security saw this happening in their security room. They saw him hit her in the face and knock her out. So they all rushed well, down to the because they had the that's where the video comes from. It's from yeah. their security videos. Yeah, exactly. So they they ran down to the they rushed down to the scene and uh, they were trying to figure out what happened and he Ray Rice then says, "Oh, she's drunk, she's drunk. Don't call the cops. Don't call the cops. Don't worry about this." And they're like, "No, we're reporting this to the police." So the first thing Ray Rice does is pick up his cell phone and call his defense attorney. That's what I'm assuming he calls his defense attorney. He called somebody. This is what the security guard said and said, "Come get me. I'm about to be arrested in 10 minutes." Now, uh, to be fair, I'll I'll give him the benefit of the doubt or not really because we already know what happened. But <laughs> In general, that's not... I wouldn't say that that's a bad thing. I would say that, especially for anyone who has that much money, he should have been trained, and it's that high profile, should have been trained by now to know anytime he's going to be involved with the police, get his lawyer involved. I'm not saying but, that he shouldn't get his yeah. lawyer involved. I'm saying that his first phone call should have been to a 911 to get an ambulance there because he doesn't know what the damage he just did to his wife. Because she's still laying unconscious okay. on the floor. She, his first call well, is to that, save that, himself, that, not save he really his wife. He really should have been calling 911 before he saw the security guards. Security yeah. guards are already taking care of that side of things, but... Yeah, but still, I mean... Call the, the 911, uh, like, either... I, maybe in the elevator he doesn't have a reception, but as soon as he got out of the elevator... Well, they he weren't in the elevator for that long after yeah. he hit her. I mean, maybe 20 seconds after he yeah. hit her. Either way, like, if, if we're going to go with the should have called 911 first, it really should have been even before he talked to the, the security guards. Yeah. It well, should have been I mean, immediately. He shouldn't have moved her body. It, again, he, yeah. It, don't know. And he shouldn't have moved her the way he moved her, just drags her lifeless body out of there. So, yeah. so, so now we know what really happens. And so let's take a look back at everything else that happened before we knew about how he really struck her and the, how the incident really went down. So, first of all, he brings his wife in to meet with Roger Goodell. Now, again, I'm no psychologist, I'm no expert, but if you've heard about domestic violence victims, I did a little bit of reading on it, what happens is these people, their self-esteem goes down. They believe that they did something to, to encourage it, it or very deserve... Common. Deserve that is a problem. This, yeah. this action against them. I mean, that's why you've seen in movies, look what you made me do, and oh, I didn't mean to make you do that. You know, it's 
you know, you cooked the wrong dinner, husband beats his wife, and then the wife says, well, that's my fault for not cooking them the proper dinner. I mean, it's not. It's not their fault. Those victims, you're a victim. You have no blame in this situation. There is no reason for them to buddy or you know strike to the face it's it's just that's number one so Roger Goodell lets them come in and interviews them both together now again I'm not saying that this is necessarily the case but if you look at it it kind of makes sense what do what would a domestic violence victim do with the abuser right next to her in a meeting like that would she tell the truth or would she say something to make sure that he doesn't hit her again later the prowl <laughs> I don't even know if you would have to go that far. Like you were saying, like the psychology sometimes really is, they really do blame themselves. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, I'm somewhat convinced, especially with the statements we've seen from from um, his wife since then, Janae Rice, that she really does think that this was not that big a deal and that he should be let off. And she's, she's genuinely upset that he's being kicked out of the league uh, for this action. She doesn't see it as... Um, that big a deal and it's really she sees it as just something between her and him and that maybe she really does think that well I egged him on or something like that I, again, um, I, I, like, again I'm, I'm sorry that that it feels it's that not it's not something we should accept but I can see that maybe she really does think that because and that's, that's the situation yeah, that, that can be kind of a, a you know that's a problem in our society because that's it's domestic violence is not something it, that has been recorded the over the, with, the years I mean yeah. this is really something that's really come up in the uh, 70s 80s 90s 2000s as being more of a problem because women have figured out hey if you're hitting me I do not have to take this what you're doing is not right to me it, it's it's wrong you know you probably have the problem not me which is the way that it should be because that's that's how it is you know it's not the abused person's fault it's the abusers fault and that's just part of the culture that I, I'm hopefully this will help open up some of the eyes of people that might be abused out there and they realize hey I don't have to take this this is not right there are people out there that will help me I mean I'm sure there's domestic violence hotlines the local police in any place you're living in if somebody is laying their hands on you, whether you be the man hitting the woman or the woman hitting the man, it doesn't matter. Whatever type of abuse is going on should not be happening. Simple yeah. as that. Especially and like this. Be clearly understood um, something like, I don't know if you're aware, but Patrick Stewart's actually very uh, uh, invested in dealing with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. his, his father was uh, violent against his mother a lot. and that So it's serious for him, and he used to say that, um, you know, even if because he used to hear the arguments back in, I don't know, the 40s, 50s, saying like, oh, well, did the police would tell, ask his mother, like, oh, well, you were clearly arguing with him. It takes two to argue, and he would say, no, it's not. But even if, even if she had done something to egg him on, there's no excuse mm -hmm. for using this kind of violence yeah, against, exactly. against, your, uh, against your spouse or against anyone, really, in that situation. Like... And just like here, like Janae, even if she was egging him on, even if she was threatening to, to hit him. Even if she spit on him, like some people have even said, if she spit on him. It doesn't Still warrant not acceptable. Not out. acceptable. Yeah, it does not warrant being... Not, and and she even said at one point, one of the security guards also reported that she said, how could you do this to me? I'm the mother of your children. But obviously, she's not still going with that line of thinking, unfortunately. But, but like, uh, getting back to where we were. So she, they meet with Goodell, and he has... You know, he, he doesn't even have the wherewithal to say, okay, Ray, you step out of the room. I'm going to talk to her, see what went on. You know, doesn't do that. They meet with the Ravens, same thing. They're both in the room together. And then uh, they didn't even meet with the owner. I think they just met with the GM and the vice president of operations. So, you know, they didn't really meet. So it's weird. And then the whole press conference thing was kind of Ray Rice saying, hey, I'm putting my wife out there, and I'm going to say, and a lot of people, this is what I've heard too. Now, I don't know if it's totally true, but that Ray Rice really wanted to have that press conference. And Ray Rice really pushed it forward to have his wife there as well. Uh, so, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. That, but, that's um, actually a common thing for politics. Like, that's a common PR move that yeah. if there was some conflict that people see your wife involved in, have a press conference where you discuss well, it with you your see wife. With politicians there. with infidelity, especially, you yeah. see that. Yeah. So, but. And then, you know, but then it also makes me start to think, okay, so 
the NFL said that they did this crazy good investigation. They went through all the things. They got all the tapes. They got everything that they were supposed to get, and they decided a two-game suspension was warranted. Now, again, Goodell did come back later and say that I was too light on him. I should have given him a heavier suspension. But And they did change their policy they after, did. before the video came out, to their credit, and uh, after that time to say that, from now on, we'll do six-game suspension, I think, was the minimum. Yeah, six-game suspension, with. which, if that's the new policy, they broke the policy already by indefinitely suspending Ray Rice. So that's kind of... I think, way. well, unless, if that was the minimum suspension. No, I believe that was that was the, the, the maximum, that was the standards. You get suspended for six games for your first incident, you get suspended... For okay. Ban to lifetime ban after that. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go those. into that one later yeah, and yeah, uh, it, the logistics of that one. But we, we can move yeah, on. So, to that. so the other problem I'm having is not only with what Ray Rice did, what how he treated his wife, and how it almost looks like he paraded her around to make her make everybody else think that she was not guilty, but it was also on the handling of the NFL side, because apparently. Now, this is, uh, I've been reading this in different news sources. Apparently, they received the said video that TMZ released last Monday on April 9th. There was even a recording uh, of a voicemail from a female executive from the NFL uh, corporate branch, I believe, um, saying that, yes, we have received the video. Thank you. It is even more horrible than we thought. So, Goodell has come out and said that the first time he saw the video was on Monday. The Ravens organization has come out and said the first time they saw the video was Monday. But it's been said, and almost proven, that they have all had access to this video before then. So what was going on? Were they covering stuff up? Were they Did they just hope this would all go away? I mean, I really... Were they were the particular players that are of focus, Goodell, the Ravens organization, maybe they really didn't watch the video. Maybe they wanted to have deniability in case anything came out. Maybe they knew what was going to be on there, and they said, all right, well, we want to sweep this under the rug anyway. Let's not watch the video yeah, well, so that we could say that we hadn't seen it. And, but still, but I'm what sure is, someone at the NFL did that's see almost, it. That's almost more despicable than than seeing it. And was, you yeah, know, that, It's just like I'm going to close my eyes to what's going on and hope that nobody notices. So, I, I mean, Pete, there's a lot of people out there calling for Roger Goodell's job. I don't think he should go that far. Um, I don't think anybody. I don't think he should be fired as his position because he has done a pretty darn good as commissioner, locking down on a lot of different things. But it's like, what do you? Where? Where's the disconnect here? Why are you being punishing people so much for smoking marijuana and not punishing people enough for hitting their wives? I mean, there's a little bit of a disconnect on the policies. So. I'm not exactly sure what to say about that. But. I, I, I can say I think the, the thing with the policies is the drug substance abuse or use uh, is a little bit more... It had been more of a hot button issue in sports. It's more prevalent. In, and thankfully, it's, a big it's thing more prevalent, it seems like. That they want to cut down on. And that they know, for instance, like we've talked about many times before... It's really tarnished um, the MLB's reputation, even though the MLB's reputation is mostly about steroids. NFL wants to stay away from anything that can be related to that, so, yeah. and that's why they're, they they hit that one hard, and people think about that more. Yeah. Domestic Still, like, uh, abuse, universe, even though it's a very common crime, we don't usually think about that with sports players as much. It's not as hot button of a thing with sports players, so they probably they they don't really address it as much because it doesn't come up as much, at least as far as we're aware. Now, granted, it could come up more, and we just don't usually have a tape of it. No, but, yeah, that's well. true. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just a really... It's just a bad situation. And I've heard some people stand up and applaud the Ravens, saying, oh, good job, you cut them. No, not good job. You guys half-assed your investigation, suspended them for two games, which is nothing. It's a mere pittance. And then when the the crap hits the fan, then you do the right thing. You you were kind of forced into a corner to do the right thing, which again, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I'm hating on the Ravens organization. You guys didn't do a good job. If anybody should be fired, it should be those guys who didn't fully complete everything. And, and you know, I, it's yeah, just it, a very it, disappointing situation. It is clear to me. Like we talk about, why didn't they do this before and all these things. There's an obvious reason why. This is why are they changing it now? Why didn't they do it before? It's a business decision. They and wanted to keep Ray Rice sad. on. They also want, and, and also they wanted to hope that um, people wouldn't think that this that they had done something, and wouldn't think that it was as 
big of a problem as it was by the way that they reacted. And they probably didn't want to know what was on that tape and didn't want to have that tape come out because, again, it just... Even if they address it severely, they knew that it was going to be a problem for the NFL. It looks bad on the whole organization. They would wish it would just go away. Yeah. Um, and then, Which is sad that they almost put their money, their pocketbooks, yeah. and their record for the season over somebody else's well-being. Now, yeah. again, I don't know Ray Rice. I've never and met then, him personally, and, and I don't know Jana Rice. I don't, I don't know if this is a one-time incident or this has happened multiple times. I just know that anytime this happens, there's something very wrong. And yeah. Something severe needs to happen to fix it. Now, I'm not saying that Ray Rice is beyond and redemption. We, and if he there is um, a real need to send a message. Like, you know, some people may be saying, well, if she wants to get over it, is it really, um, are we really helping her in this situation? We might not be helping her. The whole point, I think, is really to say that this is not acceptable in our society uh -huh. in general, and especially from elite athletes that are at the top of their game that can do some of the most violence and most damage to people. And the people that are at the forefront of um, uh, celebrity status, we do not accept it from them. We do not accept it from anyone under any circumstances. And hopefully this will, this will, if somebody is scared out there, if there's a man or a woman, because don't think that this is just men hitting women. There is plenty of cases out there of domestic violence of women against men. So I just hope that this case might inspire people to say, hey, this is not right. Society doesn't believe it's right. Why should I accept it and get help? So, you know, that's that's hopefully the silver lining is this helps more people step forward yeah. if they're having this issue. And, and I don't know if this was on the, the docket for tonight, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. There has been some good coming from this of the uh, of awareness anyway. Uh, particularly there was the big um, um, trend of why I stayed of domestic violence victims telling their story why they stuck around in these bad situations and why they left uh, for the ones that did leave eventually, what helped them eventually get out of that situation. Mm. So, but uh, yeah, it, it, we, we went a little bit longer on this story than I really wanted to, but, uh, you know, it is kind of an important issue, just not only in sports but in life. So, you know, let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, hit us up at, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. And, you know, if, if this is happening to you, get help. Put it in comments down below. We'll do whatever we can. I don't, I don't know what we can do, but we'll do whatever we can. I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm about six foot three. My little brother is about six foot two. I'm not saying we'll hit anybody, but we're big guys at least. We, we have Chewbacca. We do have Chewbacca. And he is. I'm telling you. No matter what you're going through, Chewbacca with a chainsaw will take care of it. <laughs> yes, yes, he will. Yes, he will. So, yeah. So let's let's roll that off of the the more depressing to uh, you know the the happy part of football, the part we all wait every year for, the part that makes you in in February and March just just wish it was September. And that is the games, people. The games are going on. So we just finished week one. It was pretty exciting week one, unless you're a Redskins fan or a, a Giants fan, because those two teams looked pretty darn bad. So... Ravens didn't look good on their first game either. Oh, you're just <laughs> you're just piling on. Well, I, I'm sorry, like, like aside from all the other controversy, that was not a good game. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> a very good game, that's true. Not a good game for but, them. <laughs> let's start by talking about the Broncos and Seahawks. Now, both these teams started out the season playing excellent teams. Seahawks played the uh, Packers. With Aaron Rodgers, you can't have a bad team with Aaron Rodgers, guaranteed. Uh, and they demolished him, 36-17, I believe was the final score, and it didn't even feel like it was that close. So they're looking dominant. They're, it looks like their offense is clicking now. They still have no wide receivers. So I don't know who Russell Wilson throws it to, but he gets it to somebody. Uh, I don't know how, but their defense is looking as dominant as they were last year. And then the Broncos came out and played the Colts. And this is pretty cool. This is one of my favorite things that came out of the weekend is that, uh, you know what? I skipped the Chewbacca Chainsaw Award in the beginning. We're going to award it right now. It goes to Peyton Manning for beating all 32 teams in the NFL. Every single one of them he's won against. Is that unusual? It's only happened one other time with Brett Favre. Really? Well, think Brett about Favre it. If, really forever. Yeah, well, yeah. And so has Peyton switched Manning. switched teams so many times. No, well, yeah. not so many times. Only a couple times at the end of his career. Only twice, actually. Jets and Vikings. That was I thought it. he tried to pick up another one after that. No. No, he was, he was done after the Vikings. Um, but it, it doesn't happen often because if you have a good enough quarterback who's that good who can beat every single team, um, usually they stay with one team. 
So you you have players like Dan Marino who's beaten 31 teams or 30 teams because I don't think the Jaguars or Panthers were in there, um, but he'd never beat the the Dolphins. And you have plenty of players like that. Usually you don't beat one oh, or two teams. Oh, that's so. that's what I hadn't been thinking about was the 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 problem of beating the team that you're on. Okay, there that's that's and, the key there because you have to be traded to do that part. Yeah. part of it. So Peyton Manning came out on Sunday Night Football and looked as dominant as ever. It looked like he's going to pick up right where he left off last year with his record-setting pace last year or his records that he set last year. Uh, so it looking like unfortunately. Well, go ahead and give Peyton his Chewbacca Chainsaw Award. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I have it. I have it. Not ready for it. it. (laughs) Yeah, so Peyton, you get our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award. So it's looking like, and I hate to say it, but it's only week one, but it looks like we're going to see a Seahawks Broncos round two. Um, And this time, though, better watch out because the Broncos did focus a lot on their defense this offseason. Their offense didn't really need any help. They were record-setting offense, but the defense definitely needed help. In case the offense struggles a little bit, that defense can put a stamp on it. They did improve their secondary, getting Aqib Tlaib and TJ Ward. Uh, They brought in DeMarcus Ware to rush the passer, so they're doing pretty good there. So it's looking like get ready for another one of those guys, or at least both of them in the AFC-NFC championship game. So. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really like that because I like the parody of the NFL. That's what everybody loves about the NFL is it's so unpredictable from year to year. But, yeah, yeah, what can you do? And then the next story I want to talk about is John Abraham. Now, he is the leading, sa- the active sack leader for the NFL right now. Um, he's got about 133 and a half sacks in his career. And this past Sunday, he suffered a concussion. Now, this is bad because John Abraham over the past year has been suffering severe memory loss. Um and at the, towards the middle of the game, he got the concussion, came out. Now, I believe he hasn't been cleared yet, but on Monday, he actually sat down with his coach, Bruce Arians, and it looks like John Abraham might retire. Uh, he kind of said that he's lost his will to play the game. Uh, and you know what? I, I kind of respect that as somebody – that's something most people don't do. If you can sit around for a year, take up a roster spot, and collect a big check – most people would do that. He's saying, you know what, I've lost the passion for it. Let me step aside and maybe give a chance to a younger player to come up and make a name for themselves. So um, I hope that with all the medical advances we're having nowadays that they figure out a way to help you, John, because severe memory loss, that could be probably one of the most frustrating things that you could experience. Um, and, yeah, and he was a good player. He played a long time with the Jets and the Falcons, and this is his first year, I believe, with the Cardinals. So, yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of sad, but it's kind of what football players do. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't usually hear about memory loss. I mean, it probably happens more often than I think. But usually that's... it comes up mm-hmm. later on in, in their life, like years yeah, and years after. Yeah, memory is a little shaky or something like that. So, But yeah, so hopefully, you know, if this is the decision, do what's right for your family, retire, get the medical help you need. Hopefully with all the new concussion protocols and the new um, system set up to help players that have suffered concussions over their career, hopefully you'll be getting the help you need and they'll be able to maybe reverse or slow down what's going on. So that's the hopes there. And let's let's take it from... I, did, I went sad again, damn it. I'm trying not to be sad. I'm trying to be happy. So let's be happy and talk about a really funny play that happened this weekend. And that was Antonio Brown, the Steelers wide receiver actually kicked uh, Lanning, Steve, uh, uh, Spencer Lanning, sorry, um, in the face. He's the, the punter, and this was on a punt return. And what happened is you have Antonio Brown running down the field, and you have Spencer Lanning coming over to tackle him. You like my little stick figure fingers? And Lanning goes down to get into position to tackle Antonio Brown low because there's no way if he goes high, Antonio Brown's going to run through him. So Antonio Brown is ready. He's like, okay, I'm going to jump over him. And then Lanning kind of gets up a little bit, and Antonio Brown goes, well, I don't want him to flip me over. Kick to the face. <laughs> so, I'm sure everyone's seen the video by now, and if you haven't, go look it up. Um, no, no, they don't need to. They just saw exactly what happens. Kick to the face. So if you want to see what actually <laughs> happened, you can go. There's there's even some GIFs out there right now that, that just show the whole thing, really. Yeah. All you need to see. Um, yeah, I mean... I missed that play when I was watching the game somehow. Like, I, I was gone at the time. But um, watching it again, it was like, man, he really yeah, just... It just looks like a kick to the face. Yeah, like, it was I a kick to the face. I know that he probably was trying to jump over him and messed up, 
But well, what he did, what he, what he, he said, it's a square in the face. It's just like, <laughs> well, what they, he was interviewed about it on Tuesday, because uh, a lot of players have off on Mondays, uh, and then they come back on Tuesdays. So he was interviewed about it on Tuesday, and he actually said, yeah, well, I was afraid he was going to stand up on me, and then I would go flipping through the air. So I kind of aborted my, my jump over him, mid-jump, and I accidentally kicked him in the face. And now this is the funny part about this story. This is where it kind of gets weird. Uh, is reporters then asked him, well, hey, did you did you talk to him after the game? Did you smooth it over? Did you guys discuss what's going on? And Antonio Brown goes, yeah. Yeah, I went and talked to him. We kind of laughed it off. I, I apologized to him. He said, oh, don't worry about it, man. It was a mistake. I might have done the same thing in your position because you don't want to get flipped over. You might get more hurt that that way. And And so, you know, makes sense. I mean, it's a physical sport. You know, mistakes are going to happen. If Yeah, it looks funny, but you can tell he didn't really do it on purpose. And then the next day, reporters are asking uh, Spencer Lanning about this incident. And they say, well, Antonio said he came and talked to you. And Lanning kind of goes, huh? W what do he say? And they're like, well, they said that you, you kind of laughed it off, and, and you guys were like, oh, sorry about that. And he, he said that you might have said that you would do the same thing. And Lanning kind of looks at the reporters and goes, well... It's funny, because that's what I was planning on saying to him, but I couldn't find him after the game. We never spoke. So, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, hold, okay, hold so he got the sentiment right, but they never actually exchanged the words. Hold on, in all seriousness, kind of seriousness and sadness. So it, that, that was a pretty severe kick to the face. Maybe he doesn't remember everything right now. Well, he actually also went on after that saying that he didn't get hurt at all. Actually, that his face mask blocked most of it. He doesn't remember getting him. hurt. because he has his... <laughs> Well, maybe, but yeah. But my thing is, I think that actually Antonio Brown is not lying, that he did try to go talk to him. But since Lanning is a punter, and nobody really cares about punters, he probably just walked up to a guy wearing a Brown jersey and was like, my bad for kicking <laughs> you in your face. you know. And he didn't know any better. He that would be hilarious. Tried to apologize, he apologized to a player so. on that team that he actually talked to, who was who maybe thought that he was talking about a completely different play or something like that. <laughs> uh oh, that's cool, man. It's cool. But yeah, so that was that was kind of weird. Um, and then I'm gonna give you a couple updates from the NFL. Uh, Newton actually was Cam Newton was back at practice this week. He missed the week one game because of his cracked ribs. Now, I would expect him to miss week two at least, just heal himself up, because he only suffered that cracked ribs about two weeks prior to the beginning of the season. Um, but he did miss the first one. Uh, but the best thing about uh, Cam Newton is he was in a press conference yesterday, and he was talking about the Detroit Lions, his upcoming uh, opponent. And they were like, well, what are you going to do? What if they get to you and hit you? And he goes, well, you know, they're probably going to hit me. And now we all know about Andamakan Sue, one of the most dominant defensive linemen. Now, I don't know if he did this on purpose, or if it was just a joke, but during the whole press conference, and he probably said it like eight times, instead of saying Indomitian Sue, he called him Donkey Kong Sue. <laughs> He's like, I gotta watch out for Donkey Kong Sue. Gotta watch out for that guy. He's tough. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't want Donkey Kong Sue to hit me. I gotta think that that's, that's gotta be... That, that has to now be the nickname for the guy. Like, and it's not uh, a bad nickname. Play, it, 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 no, it's not. I mean, Donkey Kong, serious stuff. Mm -hmm. Who would want to go against a defender named Donkey Kong? Like, not if me. you got that name... Mm -hmm. That means you're defending, like, you, you could steal away, I don't know, damsels in distress and climb up. <laughs> and throw magic barrels. And yes. if anybody steals your banana hoard, you'll go get them by clamming on trees and bouncing on people's heads. And you know what? If somebody was like, words to my face, you guys are the Donkey Kong of YouTube videos, I'd be like, awesome. I don't know why it's so awesome, but awesome. It's awesome because people, even today, like, what, 30, 40 years after the original game was made, are still playing and trying to set records on that. True. So it's true. the biggest competitive that means game. You're one of the biggest, strongest characters, and you have longevity. What's that? I, and the I Donkey Kong Country Donkey series Kong. is awesome. Yes. Well, that yeah, yeah, that's true too. So yeah, so <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I wanted to talk about that. And then other news coming from the Rams. Uh, stellar defensive end Chris Long, son of Hall of Famer Howie Long, actually is having um, ankle surgery, so he's going to miss the next eight to ten weeks. And when I heard that, I thought to myself, well, they had this rookie that they drafted who did awesome in the preseason that they cut, got picked up by the Cowboys. Yeah, they should have kept Michael Sam, it looks like, because Michael Sam was doing played the same position, and the reason they didn't keep Michael Sam is because they had such great players at those positions already. And it seems like, wow, you guys botched it. You probably should have kept him on the roster. 
Yeah, but you can't always predict everything that's going to happen. So You can never predict anything that's going to happen, especially in the NFL. But it just seemed to me like the way Michael Sam played, he deserved a roster spot on the Rams. I'm glad he caught on with the Cowboys, except for it's the Cowboys. So, yeah. So we're not glad. <laughs> well, not at all. <laughs> I'm glad for Michael Sam for being on an NFL team. Although, then again... Uh, Cowboys aren't doing too well either so far. So oh, wait, wait, hold on. Breaking news about the Cowboys. Breaking news. Breaking news. Yeah, they suck. Yeah, right. <laughs> they suck. Yeah, sorry, Cowboys. You didn't look as bad as the Redskins. Yeah, yeah, you did. You looked pretty bad. So they they looked almost almost the same. It looked like they scored more points than the Redskins though. So mm. I, I guess, but they also had more points scored on them. That's true too. Very true too. So, yeah, and so that's going to be our NFL. So let us know about any of the NFL stories we talked about. Are you guys going to call us the Donkey Kongs of YouTube videos? Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter, Words My Face at gmail.com, uh, Google Plus, Facebook. We're not fishing. We're not fishing. Maybe we are. Maybe first we're person, <laughs> first person to to say we're the Donkey Kong of YouTube videos will get a shout out next video. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> no bribery <laughs> completely authentic reactions here <laughs> that's what we're going for but uh, yeah so let's move it on and let's talk about some MLB and the magic numbers are out people and if you don't know what the magic numbers are it's where um, you have a division winner a leader and it's the number of games that either they need to win or the person right underneath them needs to lose or a combination of the both to clinch the division. So let's say your magic number is 12. If you win six games and the person right below you loses six games anytime from here to the end of the season, you clinch your division. So I'm going to run down a bunch of the, the magic numbers, and we're going to start out with uh, the AL East. Now Baltimore's magic number right now, as of last night, I shouldn't say of right now because they did have games today, but Baltimore's magic number was eight. Now, this is the lowest of all the Magic numbers. Now, they are up in their division by about 10 games, so it's looking like Baltimore is going to cruise to um, seal in the deal within the next week or two because right behind them, I believe the Blue Jays and the Yankees are pretty close. They're either tied or about a half game separated, but it doesn't look like either one of those teams is really going to catch up. And then we'll move on to the AL Central, and you have the Royals. Their Magic number as of last night was 17, but, unfortunately, it's looking like... I think that's the words for my face team of destiny this year is the Royals. So mm. we're, we're rooting from them here. But it looks like Detroit is right there. They're only one game behind them. So that's why that 17 is such a big number. Um, Detroit's really been catching fire. They had their slumps, but it looks like they're on their way back up, and they're catching fire right before the playoffs. I mean, just in their last... When it's a one-game separation, that's definitely not something that you would... Um you would really say is guaranteed or even necessarily likely. It's like, yeah, it's, it's one game. Yeah, it's yeah. one game and there's, a, what, 17, 18 games left, you're saying? Uh, no, so. there's well, that's there's probably about uh, 20 to 30 games left, I think, somewhere. Either way, one game, yeah, it's, it's nothing. there's plenty it's nothing. of time. Yeah, so there's plenty of time. So keep an eye on the AL Central race. That looks good. But again, words to my face, I think we're, we're rooting for the Royals there. Uh, they haven't made the playoffs in 29 years, so... Yeah. We'll root for you, Royals. Yeah. <laughs> and then moving on to the AL West, uh, my opinion for the best division in all of baseball. But you have the Angels are nine. Uh, their magic number is nine. Uh, so they're up on Oakland. Now, Oakland, for a long time, either had the best record or when the Brewers were having their bad month, I mean, were having their good month, had the second best record for almost the entire season. It almost felt like from April all the way through September they had the best record, uh, or August. And then August they started tapering off. Um, and it's kind of weird, too, because they made a bunch of trades that seemed to make the team a lot stronger. They brought in pitchers. They brought in, I mean, they got, did get rid of Cespedes, and he did get a Chewbacca Chainsaw with a week award. So it's kind of foolish to get rid of a Chewbacca Chainsaw. We talked about that, too. Like, what a bad move it is to get rid of a Chewbacca Chainsaw the Week Award winner. Shouldn't do it. Just that, that's do it. really the problem. They got so rid of the, the, the CCA. Happened. It's because Billy Bean did not watch Words from My Face, and he didn't realize that Cespedes got the award. So... Yeah. Well, um, that's bad on him. Yeah, really bad on him. Really bad on him. Shame on you. Shame. Why did anybody make a movie about you? I don't know. Because obviously all you had to do was listen to our show, and we would have told you what you had to do to win the World Series, and that's keep Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winners on your team. 
That's it. And grab all the others. That's what you really should be doing. Hey, be we talked about a, a high school order. pitcher. All you had to do was sign the high school pitcher that we talked about, Dylan Fosnatch. We had him a couple months ago. Was a Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winner. Yeah. I mean, hell, you could have gotten the swimmers that we gave Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winners. Hey, Monet Davis, the 14-year-old phenom, or 13, maybe 12-year-old phenom from the World Little League World Series. All you had to do was get her. Because then you have the Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winners. And you know what? Chewbacca comes with them. If you if you combine enough Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winners in one team, you get Chewbacca. You get Chewbacca. He shows up. He's like, he I gotta come. One, one day appearance, but one day is all you need. <laughs> one day, he'll win every game for you. Yeah. In one day. Trust me. Every other team you're about to play will forfeit once they hear Chewbacca's in the building. Preemptively. <laughs> <laughs> so... And so let's move it over to the NL. And now the NL East, you have the Nats with a 10-game magic number. I believe it's down to 9 because I think they won tonight. Uh, so they are at 9 for their magic number. You had the Braves. They just had a big series over the weekend. They won 2 out of 3 against the Braves. So they're kind of cutting down that number. Uh, they're the second strongest team, it looks like. Uh, you know, for Or they're the strongest team in the East. I mean, sorry, not the East. I meant the NL. So it looks like they're going to pull it off. Then in the NL Central, you have the Cardinals with a 14-game magic number. Now, they're a little bit tighter. Pittsburgh is only about 3.5 games behind them. So it's nowhere said and done. But it's it's looking pretty decent for them. And then with the West, you have the Dodgers with a, another big number, and that's 16 is their magic number. And that's because in the West, you do have San Francisco's kind of charging right behind them. Those guys have a lot of good playoff experience. They're only two and a half games back. So there's a lot of baseball to be played and a lot of fun. But I, I always love this magic number because just counting down is fun. So, yay, fun with numbers. Yay. Numbers. Let, let us know who you think is going to win clinch first, which magic number is going to be evaporated before any of the other ones. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. But you know what? I think that about does it. We're done. We're not going to talk anymore. Okay, maybe I'll talk a little bit. Just to ramble and say we're done. What's going on in hockey? Um, All the ice is melted right now because it's not winter yet. <laughs> that okay. is what's going I, on. That's about as much as I care. I mean... Hockey. <laughs> Hockey, yay! 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 <laughs> yay! Hey, we can talk about NASCAR. Uh, Name two drivers in NASCAR. Jeff Gordon. One. <laughs> uh, Dave Earnhardt. <laughs> really? Really? That's all the names I know. Which Dave Earnhardt? Junior. Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> I'll get. I'll let you go. Well, and you know him because he's a Redskins fan, so that's <laughs> that's about that. But about? yeah, so I think we're gonna sign it off for tonight. So as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. You. And we are gonna headbang our way out of this joint. Really, we don't have another sports topic. Do you want to talk about another sports topic? I did have a couple other ones that I felt like cutting out. I mean, you already said we're going to stop. Well, I mean, real quickly, you're obviously really quickly not ready. Before we hit okay, one fast, quick thing. Fast, fast. The, people the Royals want. right now have the three pitchers with the three longest active scoreless streaks right now in the MLB. Um, so that's pretty good. Their pitchers are doing really well. Move next topic. Quick. Um, uh, the, the MLB actually clarified the rules on not blocking the plate. They made it simpler to understand. As long as you have possession of the ball before the runner, before you would impede the path of the runner, um, it is not considered blocking the plate. Cool. Next, last one. Last one. Can we do the triple? Can we do the triple? Um, yeah, we can. Hat Floyd trick. Mayweather put his foot in his mouth, came out, and defended Ray Rice. Whoa!
Good night, everybody!